Yeah. 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 Okay, Pastor. There, of course, are never ideal circumstances for funerals, but I do thank you all for your time and willingness to come. And obviously, I know all of you as family is very dear to Sunny and very meaningful that we could all gather today despite the limitations of what the world has brought us. And so today we have joined together in memory of Sonny. Each and every one of us have probably countless memories of Sonny. I would invite you after uh, we're done here to share those with one another, to keep them, keep them and to cherish them and to make them part of the legacy. Sonny did a lot in this world and we're very thankful for that. And one of the greatest things that we can do is continue on in that same vein of loving others well, of investing in our family, of making a difference in people's lives. And so I would challenge you, I encourage you to carry on that legacy moving forward. We will be recording today, it's not a normal thing I would do, but because so many people who would love to be here cannot be here, uh, we will hopefully have good enough audio and video quality that they will at least from a distance be able to participate uh, later today or tomorrow whenever they're able to watch the video. So with that, let us open in prayer. Heavenly Father, you have not made us for darkness and death, but for life with you forever. Without you, Lord, we have nothing to hope for, but with you we have nothing to fear. Lord, speak now to us your words of eternal life. Lift from us anxiety and guilt to the light and peace of your presence and set the glory of your love before us through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, we give you thanks for the life that you give us. We give you thanks for the eternal life that your light illumines for our short days and years and fills them with eternity. God, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to see that he opens the gates to life that never dies. We pray for all who mourn that they may cast their cares upon you, O God, and know the consolation and comfort of your love, and tread with us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Most of you know the details of Sonny's life more intimately than even I do, so I will refrain from reading the obituary. But we do gather today to remember the life and the legacy of Sonny Flowers. Vernon, as many of you know, but Sonny as everybody knew him. Sonny was born in St. Peter, Minnesota on January 17th, 1938. And he served in the U.S. Army for a couple of years, starting in 1960. And as we all know, he was extraordinarily proud of his time in the service. In 1962, he, of course, married the love of his life, Lila Lindgroth at the time, here at Glory Baptist Church, just down the road from here. And, uh, of course, they... It was here. Oh, it was in this building. Okay. What year was... Oh, we can talk about that later. I was thinking that was before the switch. Okay, well... In this building right here, then. I, I am corrected. Um, they were married, and Sonny, Sonny always, endlessly, spoke highly of Lila. Always had good words to say. Was always uh, marveled, in fact, at her steadfast support and love. So much credit to you, Lila, that he was always, without question, 100% of the time, complimentary of you. So he spoke very, very nicely and proudly of you at all times. They, of course, were married here 
had a handful of kids. I have a, I have a bunch of grandkids and great grandkids and other kids that, even beyond that, that they loved exceptionally well. Uh, legacy of love is such a wonderful thing, and, and certainly Sonny has left that. One of the things that I, I learned right away when I first came to the church, and, and I knew this held true, Sonny always had a smile for me. Even on days where he wasn't feeling the best, even on days where he was a little bit surly and grumpy at times, because that did occasionally happen, he still had a smile for me. He'd give me that smile, and he might tell me about his woes, but he'd always give me that smile. And he was incredibly proud to love and serve others, be it here at the church. Uh, I remember the first day when he was able to come back for the first time after being in the nursing home, and him sitting in the lobby just getting to sit there and hand out bulletins with his brother Raleigh. Uh, it, you could see the joy in his face, and, and the opportunity for him to love others that way was, was the highlight for him. Uh, could be serving in the color guard. He, he adored that form of service. He, he absolutely loved to be with the guys, and he loved to be honoring others, and he loved to be honoring his country. He loved to serve. Uh, serving the Persian Gulf vets, serving in all sorts of ways, shapes, and forms. His life is a legacy of love and service. Now, I know many of you, and probably all of you, in fact, as dearly beloved family members, each and every one of you know this. He touched you in, in deep and meaningful and lasting ways. And that started early on, whether it was stepping in as a father figure for his sibling. At a very young age, he had the opportunity to, to do great things, and he stepped forward and really did a great job with that. He, he spoke continuously about all of you. Um, I've gotten to visit with Sonny probably more than anybody else in this church, honestly, over the last three years, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, anyhow. And uh, in visiting with him, he just loved to tell stories about all of you. Sometimes not always the, the stories you may want him to tell me about, <laughs> but stories. And so I've heard stories about you, and he loved to tell them. He loved to tell me about, you know, the, the newest ongoings with the grandkids. He loved to tell me who got a, a different job, or who was building this, or who was doing that. Sonny loved to be able to tell stories, and that was an important thing to him, and he loved to do it with me. Now, we're, we're thankful that for many of you, especially kids, um, he got to see you in the last day of his life. Uh, that, that is a, a great thing, considering the times. We are truly thankful for that, and we're thankful, too, that he, he passed quiz quickly, without a lot of pain, without a lot of suffering. Um, that, that, is, that is a good thing, and we are glad for that. But it leaves a loss. It leaves a hole in our hearts. Uh, it, it leaves a sense of loneliness. And in a time where, frankly, a lot of us already have some anxiety, and a lot of us already have some frustration, and a lot of us are already suffering a little bit with the pains of the world, this added burden is, is, is a bit rough. So I would encourage you, whether you can't do it maybe in person, but to reach out with each other, one another, regularly. Call each other, computer, FaceTime, whatever it is. Connect with one another. Share stories in the days and weeks to come. Uh, allow that grief to process. Lean into it. And in that, as you lean into it, rely and trust on the God that Sonny loved dearly. Over the years, I, of course, got to pray with Sonny quite a number of times, and and it was always meaningful to Sonny. It didn't matter how bad he was feeling that day. He absolutely wanted me to pray before I would leave. And I appreciate that dearly. He loved God. He loved Jesus. There was no question about that. We talked about that some. The, the very first time he got really sick, uh, he and I had a, a pretty deep conversation about theology and about Jesus. And and uh, I'm very glad and very proud to say and call him a brother in Christ. I know that he loved Jesus, and that is a great thing. And uh, today, Lila just suggested that I briefly share a little bit from Psalm 91. I'm not going to go through all of it. But uh, Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm. And in it, the psalmist says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Now this is a, a lovely psalm that is 
very comforting for those who know and love Jesus. Um, most of us probably can relate to this passage most intimately from our childhood, in fact. This passage talks about an intimacy and, and living in the shelter and protection of our God. If you remember back, um, you can even maybe see it a little bit at the moment of Stephen. When we were little, right, how did we, how did we react when somebody new came? We'd run to our father, right? We'd grab onto his leg and we might lean out from behind that leg and sneak a peek, right? But we would, we would hug onto that leg. And then many of you guys know, even if you don't have your own children, sometimes a, a child will mistakenly latch onto your leg, right? Because they think you're a father. I've been in grocery stores and just had kids come and grab me thinking I was dad. And, and, and this passage speaks of that intimacy and that love where we go to our father, we put our arms around his leg, we find our shelter within that. We know God as a safe place. We've had a, a relationship, and we know that if we go into the shadow of his shadow, that we can be protected and that we can be secure. And, and, and as we did that with our own earthly father, it's infinitely more true with our heavenly father. We can go to God. We can trust him, even in times of doubt, of question, of why is this happening now? We can still go to God and grab his leg and hold on tight and say, God, I don't understand this, but I know you're a safe place. And just latch onto that leg and hug and hold on. Because God is good and God is faithful. Now, Sonny and I talked a, a couple of times, in fact, about heaven. And how uh, he was looking forward to it, but he wasn't in a hurry to get there. And uh, other than the Glen store, was Sonny in a hurry to get anywhere? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't experience it, if so. He, he, he had a, a very mellow pace of life, and I appreciated that about him. And I think that's probably from the, the, the farming background. I experienced that with a lot of farmers that live at a good pace of life. They don't get so distracted by the hubbub of the world. They don't get caught up in the busyness. They don't have to rush and rush and rush. And, and I always appreciated about that, about Sonny, that he was able to be present with you and just be and to share a story, to share a moment, just to be with you. And, and he loved that. He loved being with each and every one of you. And so would encourage you to hold on to that. Further on in Psalm 91, it says this. It says in Psalm 91, 14, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now at this point in the passage, that is God speaking about how he intends to take care of those who love him, those who call upon his name. And if we desire to have a relationship with God, God rejoices in that and responds uh, to us in love and in blessing. And he assures us that he will be near to us at all times. And as we read the Bible, we can see time and time again that God keeps his promises, that God cares for those who love him. And we're further reminded of this, of course, now that we're in the middle of Easter season. We've got Palm Sunday coming, and then we've got Easter in just a little over a week. God loves us radically so. God loves Sonny. And God will not abandon Sonny to the grave. Sonny loved Jesus, and, and that is a, a wonderful, beautiful thing to be reminded in this Easter season, that God so loved the world that he sent Jesus into the world, not to condemn the world, but to free the world, to love each and every one of us, exactly as he loves Sonny. And right now, I, I fully believe, and I, I fully expect that Sonny is in heaven rejoicing, celebrating. He's, he's experiencing God's love in the full. 100% pain-free, doesn't have an arm that bothers him, a hip that hurts, back doesn't ache, none of that. He is in perfection, and it is amazing, and I'm sure he's rejoicing, I'm sure that he's celebrating, I'm sure that he's praising Jesus for all that he's done and all that he ever do forevermore. 
for believers in Christ, death is not the end. It was the end for Sonny as far as his time goes here on the earth, for the here and the now. But this is only the beginning. It is not the end. If we love Jesus, if we know God, if we have a relationship with him, the grave doesn't hold us. It can't stop us because Christ came for us. And if we do as Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Death, of course, is a, it's a solemn reminder for each and every one of us, but it points us to the wonderful, unending, never-stopping, hope-filled message of love that Jesus, the Lord of life, loved you and me, and that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but inherit eternal life. And it's my prayer, and I know Sonny prayed for you as well, that each and every one of his family members, his friends, all that he would come into contact with, would know that same love. Today, while we mourn, it is okay to shed tears. Today, while we feel lost, it's okay to feel that as well. But let us not lose sight that this is just the beginning and not the end. But if we love Jesus, just as we love Sonny, we will be reunited in a place far greater than this. And that will be forever. Amen. What a beautiful thing. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, we again just thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you love Sonny, and we thank you that he loved you, and we thank you enormously that Sonny loved us as well, each and every one of us, God. And we thank you for the difference that he made in our lives and the impact that he made, love and service. And he's invested in so many, and God, we are truly thankful for that and will forever be honored by that. And God, as we, as we both mourn and celebrate on this day, we just pray that you would give us the strength to continue forward. And as we continue forward, Lord, may we do so in this legacy of love, taking it wherever you might send us, that we might bless others as we were blessed, that we might make a difference in others' lives as, as the difference was made in our lives by Sonny. God, we are truly thankful for that. We're thankful for every day that you give us. We're thankful for the sun today that shines on us and gives us warmth. We're thankful for every blessing that you've bestowed upon us. God, continue to be with us. We praise you in Jesus' high and holy and beautiful name. Amen. A long time ago, a pastor friend of mine reminded me of something I knew, but, but it's worth and it bears repeating, that blessed are those who rear their families in honor and gentleness, who live courageous and upright lives, who live life to its fullest, and then in their part, when the Lord calls, they can retire with him and find their rest. I'll close with a commendation here, and then you can have a last few minutes, and we're going to have some music playing. As we have those last few minutes, quite a, a number of church families had expressed a desire to honor Sonny, and they couldn't be here, which is a tough thing to do. And if you look, there's a whole bunch of cars over there, and they're not going to come driving by, and they're going to wave. It's the best we can do today. But I want you to know, we love you. We're here for you. And if we can do anything for you, just let us know. Thank you for sharing Sunny with all of us. We've all been blessed by it. Now may God the Father who created this body, may God the Son who by his blood redeemed the body, may God the Holy Spirit who reaches out in faith to Sonny and breathe eternal life into him, Keep these remains until the day of the resurrection of all flesh. Amen. Again, thank you each and every one of you for being here today, for sharing Sonny's life with me, with our church, and with everyone else. It truly has been a blessing. Thank you. I would just like to say on behalf of the family, I, I feel a real honor to be able to have a part of this uh, the Flower family, we grew up with them, this goes way back, so we're just, we feel like family. I remember the last time I seen uh, Sonny was in the nursing home when I played at Christmas some songs. 
like you say, he never, he seemed to always have a smile on his face, and I, I'll always remember that. And so this song really, I know Sonny can relate to it, and I, I like to have everybody sing along if you, if you know it. It's just what a day that will be. There is calm. Thank you. Thank you. The cars will be coming in just a minute. If you'd like to say your final goodbyes, now would be the time. Love you all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, come on up, Judy. Judy, come on up. I have um, one cute thing and one very precious thing. Uh, the cute thing is that when he was living at home and working at uh, Quail's gas station, he would come down to the living room and sit in the chair near the, the stove, you know, to keep warm but he would always be fully dressed and carrying his shoes. And he would say, Jude, 
run upstairs and get me my socks. And this wasn't just one time, this was almost every single time. I have no idea why he could not remember to bring his socks down as long as he had. <laughs> he had his shoes, you know. Um, the other thing, I just found this out this past week and I was talking to my son-in-law, Bob, and you all know how Sonny just loved the color guard. And he was so determined that he was going to be at Chuck's funeral in the color guard. And my son-in-law said that he looked over at Sonny and his hand was in the salute and it was just shaking. But he was so determined that he was not going to put that hand down. Even, you know, it was hurting him, you could tell. But he was so determined and that just made my heart feel so good because he was so determined he was going to be in that color guard. So, thank you. Thank you, Judy. Anyone else like to share? I always gave Sonny a bad time. Sit up straighter. Walk a little faster. <laughs> Try a little harder. I'm with his pain in the side. I know I was, but I loved him. His biggest thing was him and my wife fought over the gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things to fight over. <laughs> they were always gone by the time I arrived, <laughs> so I didn't get any. Mary Nutting arranged all of Lila. Mm -hmm. Mary Nutting asked me if she could do this. And I gave her permission without her permission. I hope that's okay. <laughs> They've all made signs saying that they love Sonny. You may not be able to see them from here. If you want to get closer, you'll be able to read the things that they say. There's a lot of them. Sunny was love, as you know.
That would be Mary's vehicle at the very end of there. concludes our official time of service. I know Lila has invited some to join in the upper room there and the front doors are unlocked and I think most of you know how to get there. If not, uh, just follow on in and we'll get you there. Thanks again for coming. I'm praying for you. If Glory Baptist can love you or serve you, pray for you in any way, let us know. Amen.